Hello and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. And today we're going to be looking at the 2021 election because it just happened. By the time this video goes out, it only happened a few days ago. So some of the results may have changed between when I record this and when it's released, but it shouldn't alter things too much. So let's begin. The first thing I'm going to talk about is Prince Edward Island. And why? Well, it tends to be this area that the Liberals almost always win. In fact, they've won every single seat there in 2015, 2019, and 2021. But going back to 1984, they have won the majority, if not all, of the seats in that province. What about the Maritimes as a whole? Well, when you look at the maps, you tend to see it all red, or you see bits of blue, especially in places like New Brunswick. But generally, the Liberals always win there. At least they have since 1984. A lot of the things that I mentioned are going to go back to 1984, because that's when Brian Mulroney won pretty much every seat in the entire country almost, but he won the majority of seats in every single province. So the only time that's ever happened actually. So we go back to 1984 generally as kind of our marker, but the Liberals tend to always win the majority of seats in the Maritimes. The only time they didn't was in 1997 and 2011. Now somebody I want to talk about is Lawrence McCauley. He's a member of parliament from Prince Edward Island. And why is he significant? Well, a lot of the people watching this video weren't even born when he actually entered Parliament. He entered Parliament in 1988, and he stayed there 11 elections. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He's won 11 in a row in this riding. He can't be beat there. And he is the longest serving MP from Prince Edward Island in its entire history. And we're talking going back to 1867. So it's not a recent history. We're talking a ways back, over 150 years and he's beat them all. He's been there for 33 years representing his riding. And that's pretty good, but he still has 11 years to go before he beats this guy, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, who served in Parliament for 44 years. What about Trudeau himself? We can look at his minority government and he actually won a lot of seats in terms of the number of seats to win. 158 as of this recording is pretty good. And his minority government there's actually some significant things with this minority government. First, it is the largest minority government in Canadian history. No other minority government has ever had this many seats. And that's significant because if we look through Canadian history, we actually see that he's won more seats than every winning government from 1867 to 1930, 1945, 1957, 1962 to 1980, 1997, and 2004 to 2008. So he has more seats than all of those governments won when they won the election. And a lot of those actually won majority governments. And it's meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. Of course, he still has a minority government. It doesn't change anything. But what is kind of cool about it is just to show how much parliament has changed. When parliament first started, you could win a government with a majority with 100 seats. You can't do that now. The Conservatives won over 100 seats and they're still the official opposition. But as our population has grown, we now have 338 seats in the House of Commons. So it takes more and more seats in order to win that majority government. Right now, 170. Another interesting thing about this is with his 158 seats, he actually has won more seats than his father ever did. His father had three majority governments in 1968, 1974, and 1980. And Trudeau has beat his father every single year he's run as prime minister. He's always won more seats, but he's also got two minority governments, again, because parliament changes. So what about the first 21 years of the 21st century? How does that compare to the first 21 years of the 20th century? Well, it's pretty similar in some ways. In the first 21 years of the 20th century, we had four prime ministers, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, Sir Robert Borden, Arthur Meehan, and William Lyme Mackenzie King. In the first 21 years of the 21st century, We've had Jean Chrétien, Paul Martin, Stephen Harper, and Justin Trudeau. So four and four. What about the minority governments? That's where it really changes. We've had five minority governments in the first 21 years of the 21st century, but we only had one in the first 21 years of the 20th century. And that was the last one in 1921. What about election wins for the parties? Well, in the first 21 years of the 20th century, the Liberals won four times. In the first 21 years of the 21st century, they won five times. What about for the Conservatives? Well, they won twice in the first 21 years of the 20th century, and they won three times in the first 21 years of the 21st century. So 
All in all, things are pretty similar. The biggest difference is the minority governments, which are much more common now than they have been in the past. Now, one thing you're going to hear a lot about is how the Conservatives won the popular vote. And they did. And they won it in 2019. But the party winning the popular vote and not forming government is not an uncommon thing. It's not super common, but it's not extremely rare. It does happen. In fact, it happened in 1896, 1926, 1957, 1979, and 2019. So 44 elections, or 43 elections, not including the current one, and you had five times that's happened. So not common, but not crazy rare. In fact, the third party in the House of Commons has actually had more votes than the second party in the House of Commons twice in Canadian history. It happened in 1921, and it happened again in 1993. So what about the party seat count itself? How did that do? How did the Liberals compare to other times in their history? Well, this is the fourth most seats they've won since 1993, and it's the eighth most they've ever won in their entire history. Again, we're going back all the way to 1867 with them. As for the Conservatives slash Progressive Conservatives, because I'm combining the two, this is the fourth most they've ever won since 1993, but the 14th most that they've won in their entire history going back well over a century. I'm including all the way to 1867. As for the NDP, this is the fifth most they've won since 1993 and the ninth most they've won in their history, going back to the 1960s when the Cooperative Commonwealth became the new Democratic Party. And the Bloc Quebecois, which has existed since 1993, this is both the seventh most that they've won since 1993 and, well, the seventh most that they've won in their entire history. One writing I want to look at is Edmonton Strathcona. And I want to look at it because I actually live near there. And it's where the University of Alberta is. And it tends to vote very differently from the rest of Alberta. You see Alberta and you see it's just this big conservative blue. But there's this little spot sometimes. Sometimes it's the only spot. This year it wasn't. We actually had a few different places elect both Liberals and NDP. But it was this tiny spot that elected NDP. And it's continually elected NDP since 2008. In fact, the only time it has ever elected Liberals was in 1953 and 1968. Every other time it's been, well, the NDP for that portion, but the Reform Party, the Progressive Conservative Party, and the Conservative Party. But it's this really neat little riding that votes completely different from, well, everywhere else in Alberta generally. Now, if we go up north to the Yukon, that voted Liberal. And right now they tend to vote Liberal. In fact, since the turn of the century, They've always voted Liberal, except for once, and that was in 2011, when Stephen Harper got his majority and kind of swept across the country. One interesting note about this is that even though the Liberals tend to always win there now, from 1968 to 1997, they never won. And then something just changed. Now they, the Yukon is like a safe seat for any Liberal who's running for Parliament. So what about the minority governments? Well, we've had 15 in the entire history of Canada. We've had five since 2004, so we've had a fifth of all the minority governments in Canadian history have happened in less than 20 years. And that shows just how things are starting to change in Canada. Uh, it's not that we have more parties. We've actually had lots of parties before, but the parties are more regionalized and they're taking bigger blocks, which makes it harder for a majority government to form. Uh, when a party wins a whole bunch of seats, it tends to be progressive conservative or conservative because they appeal to the West. And then if they get somebody who appeals to Quebec and Ontario, they can take those and allows them to sweep across the nation. But right now we have the conservatives who take the West. BC kind of does a mix of NDP and liberal. We have Ontario, which is usually liberal, NDP and conservative. You have Quebec, which is usually liberal and Bloc Quebecois with a little bit of NDP. You have the Maritimes, which is generally liberal. So these regional things make it very hard to win a majority, and that's what we've kind of run into. We've only had two majorities since, well, we had a majority in 2000 when Jean Chrétien went, but then we never had a majority until 2011, and then we had another one in 2015. That's it so far. So Justin Trudeau has won two minority governments, and he joined some pretty select company in terms of doing such a thing. He joined Stephen Harper, who won two minority governments. He also joins Lester B. Pearson, who won two in the 1960s. He joins John Diefenbaker, who won one in the 1950s and one in the 1960s. And he joins William Lyon Mackenzie King, who won two in the 1920s. So it's not super common for a leader to win two, let alone two in a row. That's even a bit more rare, but it does happen. It happened with Stephen Harper, it happened with Lester B. Pearson. 
What about winning the election? Well, he won his third straight election. That doesn't happen super often either. We've had a whole bunch of prime ministers, but only eight, including Trudeau, have actually won three in a row. And those are Sir Johnny MacDonald, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, William Lyon Mackenzie King, John Diefenbaker, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Justin's father, as well as Jean Chrétien and Stephen Harper. Those are the ones who have won three in a row. We've actually had only one prime minister win four elections in a row, and that was Sir Wilfrid Laurier. And he served as prime minister of Canada from 1896 until 1911. Nobody has ever won four. But if Justin Trudeau has another election in two years and he's fixed a lot of the problems with his campaign and the party, he could win a majority. And then he would be the first since Sir Wilfrid Laurier to actually win four in a row. But nobody has ever won five. So that's, that's, a, that's, but with minority governments, who knows, you know, because some of these minority governments only last two years. So if you have a whole bunch of minority governments in a row, but you keep winning them, it's possible to win five elections in a row. So I want to finish this video off by looking at how Justin Trudeau compares to his dad, Pierre Trudeau, in the first three elections. And Pierre Trudeau won a majority in his first election, as did Justin Trudeau. In his second election, Pierre won a minority, just like Justin did. So we actually are completely even, but it's in the third election where things change. That's where in 1974, Pierre Trudeau won a majority government, but as we saw last night, Justin Trudeau won a minority government. So right now it's two majority, one minority for his dad and two minority, one majority for Justin. I hope you enjoyed my look at the election and some of the cool little facts about it. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter. My handle is Craig Baird, C-R-A-I-G, B-A-I-R-D. I'm on Instagram at Bairdo37. And if you want to email me, you got questions, you want me to cover something, just email Craig at CanadaEHX.com.